we looked at the before and the after methods, right? They are executed after and before every test. There would, there would be certain things which I don't really want to do after and before every test. I would want to do them before a class only once. So for this entire class, I want to do it once and I don't want to do it again. Those are the kind of things that you can use before class and after class for. So, at before class, and let's do a control space, import, yeah, that's good, and public void before class. I'll call it before class. You could have called it anything else as well. I mean, the important thing is the annotation, and the name of the method does not really matter. As our convention is, I would just call it without before class. Okay, let's quickly run this. Aha, what would happen? Aha, as expected, there's an error being thrown. What it says is method before class should be static. Okay, that's one thing you need to remember about before class. The before class, any method which is implementing at before class annotation should be a static method. So that means all the constraints that are around static methods as well. You cannot refer to instance variables and all that kind of stuff. So you can only have class level things initialized in here with only really static things initialized in the before class. And now let's see what would happen. Aha. You would have seen the green bar as well as now. You can see before class is only executed once. Before class, before test, after test, before test, after test. But the before class is only executed once before the class. And this can be used probably to initialize some database connections or things like that. I mean, I really prefer to use before and after rather than using before class and after class unless you are really concerned about performance. So if there are some things you are doing in before and after which are taking a lot of time and you don't want to run them in every test, then you can use the before and after thing. So now I used after class now. I'll import it in. Uh, I can call this class. So I'll call this after class. And after class again. And let's run this. Okay, so before test. Uh, before class and the test, another test and after class. So before class is executed once, after class is executed once. Before test and after test are executed as many times as there are tests in this particular class. So that's the introduction to before class and after class. So if we look at the summary of what we have learned in this particular section, we have started off writing assert to assert false methods and then we used at before, at after, at before class and at after class. Let's meet in the next section. Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You will find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You would find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.